Hello. I tend to do videos until I run out of steam, and I'm about out of steam now, so don't expect another video for another couple of weeks after this one. I have a food analogy, which is kind of funny given how much of an overeater I am, but it goes like this. There's arguments that are like pretzels and arguments that are like baguettes. Baguette arguments are linear, A to B. You got premises and the premises lead to a conclusion. It's simple as that. Pretzel arguments, on the other hand, are incredibly complicated. The premises lead to conclusions, which lead to more conclusions after that, and it just kind of ties in on itself. It's some often a red flag, though, if you see a pretzel. You see an overcomplicated argument. But not always, because sometimes the truth is complicated. And another thing, too, is that an argument which appears as a pretzel argument is really a normal baguette argument. It's just that you may be so unfamiliar with the topic that it appears to be a pretzel to you because it's so difficult to understand. I wish I can give good ar good examples, but it's very difficult to find examples of pretzel arguments that aren't super long. And pretzel arguments, by definition, are extremely difficult to understand and explain. But yeah. It, but it can be a red flag if you're reading an argument which does not appear to be a simple linear track from here to there, from uh, the supporting arguments to the conclusion. And in fact, philosophers who tend to be notoriously difficult to read tend to be so because they have pretzels. They're very pretzely shaped arguments, which doesn't necessarily mean they're wrong. It just means that there sh could be an issue there. For instance, uh, their Wittgenstein had a short middle period between early and late Wittgenstein, and that middle period had lots of bad pretzels in it. Wh which is why that period was short, because he uh, realized they were he was wrong, so he just needed to change it. Like, uh, in short, I'll, I won't give you the argument, but the, the problem with it was is that there was a conclusion that he really wanted to hold on to, but had been proven to be c false because a particular element that was needed to make that conclusion work ended up itself having massive issues. So he tried to work around that problem of trying to keep the conclusion alive, even though the main thing, the main supporting argument that kept that main argument alive had been debunked. So yeah, he had to work himself into some crazy, crazy pretzels in order to get that argument to work. And I wrote a 22 page, no wait, 20 ish page paper on it, and it was hard because pretzels, by their definition, don't make much sense. Are very difficult to understand. But yes, so by the definition, they're very difficult to explain. So there's not much more I can say it other than um. If you're reading an argument which seems non-linear and is really, really complicated, that's a red flag and you should try to understand it more. It's not necessarily wrong, not, it's not a fallacy, but beware of any argument which does not appear to be a baguette but appears to be a pretzel. And also understand that your ignorance of the topic may be why it appears to be a pretzel, whereas once you know more about it, it does appear to be a baguette instead. That's all.